Good morning, Kahal Kadosh. Shabuah Tov Umevorach to everybody. Today is Sunday, the fourth day of Shevat, corresponding to the 17th day of January. Today's class, graciously sponsored uh, by the Falak family, Le'ailui Nishmat, the beloved father, Ezra Ben Salah, Alava Shalom, as well as by our president, Mr. Eli Levy, Le'ailui Nishmat, his beloved grandmother, Altun Bat Salha, Iratzon, that to the words of Torah, their neshamot have an aliyah in Gan Eden. Amen. Before we begin with our regular uh, class, we'd like to speak about some of the Sadiqim that are connected to today's day. Today, the fourth of Shevat, is the Yorzai or the Hilula of the great Rabbi Israel Abu Hasira, known as the Baba Sali. Amen. The great rabbi was born in Morocco in 1889 and passed away in the city of Netivot in Israel in 1984. Obviously, the Babasali does not need my introduction. I mean, everybody heard of the Babasali. Uh, some of them, even some of the Kahal perhaps, had the merit and the privilege of meeting the rabbi uh, in person, everyone uh, heard of many miracles attributed to the great to the great tzaddik, which he was known as a great Ohev Israel, as he was known as a, a a a leader and a sage who had a tremendous amount of love for every single Jew, irrelevant of who they were, their status, the level of religiosity, the level of spirituality, their background or the language that they spoke. And there is no coincidence, as I heard many years back, uh, a shiur, and I happened to be in Israel uh, in one time in his yurt site, that uh, there's no coincidence that his name is actually Israel. The name Israel, it's a combination of the entire Jewish people. The word Israel stands for Yesh Shishim Ribo Otiot La Torah. The Torah has 600,000 letters, actually a bit more, if you want to be technical, although it depends how you count the letters, you may come out to that number, or you may come out to the number 380 some thousand, I believe. But nevertheless, his home was constantly open to listen to the needs of every Jew. Famous was his Arak, that had the healing powers, Kavyachol, and his blessings. Now, concerning the blessings, the Gemara writes a very interesting concept. Concerning the righteous, the Gemara writes, Sadiq Gozer, Be'akadosh Baruch Hu, Mekayem. The righteous decrease, and God fulfills their request. And that is the reason why people go to Sadiqim, and people go to great Hachamim, to get a blessing. Obviously, everybody has the power to, to, to pray directly to Kadosh Baruch Hu. But sometimes we need to call in the reinforcements. But there was one particular concept, the concept of uh, what made him this person who people ran to him for all kinds of needs. What was the secret of his success? that his prayers were delivered and accepted, and many, many miracles. There are plenty of books written about the greatness of the Baba Sali. But I'll tell you two short things that we learned in the, earlier in the Minyan. Shemirat HaLashon and Shemirat HaAinayim. The Baba Sali, Alav Shalom, from childhood, from childhood, those, those who knew him, including his parents, and others knew that this was not a regular child. This was a child that whatever came out of his mouth had the power to become a reality. Now, once you have such a weapon, which we already learned in last week's class, Wednesday, I think, that the power of speech is a very powerful tool. It could heal or it could hurt. So how, do, how, how does a person of the caliber of the Babasali becomes 
de Babasali. I gave you two answers. Shemirat ha'inayim, Shemirat ha'lashon. He will be very careful with his eyes and he will be careful with the speech. He will be very meticulous and very measured when it came to speak, which obviously this is something that everybody needs to do. It's not copyrighted by the Babasali, but he actually did it. We know, we understand, we agree, but when it comes to the moment of truth, perhaps we forgot that lesson particularly. But I'll tell you, a, a couple of things written and mentioned in the name of the Babasali, because at the end of the day, the reason why we speak about Sadikim is basically to learn from their life, to learn from their greatness. So the Gemara writes in Berachot, Hashote Maim Letzimao, a person that is thirsty and wants to drink water. The Gemara says, Mevarech Sheakol Niyavit Baro, no Nalacha. Rabbi Tarfon Omer, Bore Nefashot Rabot, the one that creates many souls. And we know how the halacha is. Before a person drinks water, you say, Sheakol Niyavit Baro. After you finish drinking the water, depends how much you drank and how soon you drank, if you will say Bore Nefashot or not. But comes the Babasali and it says, Hashote Maim, a person who drinks water, and Maim Ella Torah, there is no water but Torah for life. Let's me and with thirst, Ube Ahava, and with love, Me Barech. He will say the blessing of Hashem. So the bitter font says that's not enough. Yesh be koho livro nefashot rabot. What the Babasali is saying is as follows. Is not referring to the physical drinking of water. He's talking about a person that is thirsty, not physically, but spiritually. A person wants to show love to Akadosh Baruch Hu, wants to get closer to Akadosh Baruch Hu. That is the meaning of the Neshama is thirsty. So what do we say? Sheakol Niyavit Baro. Rabbi Tarfon Omer, Bore Nefashot Rabot. Now once the person has this desire and this love to Hashem that is drinking the water of the Torah, and it says here, Yesh Bekoho, Livrot Nefashot Mamash. This person has the power of creating souls. What does it mean creating souls? Of blessing others in order for the life to be happy and to be uh, meaningful. Very interesting uh, statement from the great uh, Babasali. And apparently Babasali had a lot of uh, writings uh, of Halakha and Kabbalah, but he requested for them not to be published as a book. And the, less, and the reason attributed to that was his great humility. His great humility that he had as a Mekubal, as a Sadiq, beloved and respected by everyone. And he was a fan of Chok Le Israel, which is basically what we learn daily or what we base our classes most of the year. It's based on the Chok Le Israel, which is a combination of different messages and we only do the short version. Probably if we have to do the long, the full version, it will be two to two and a half hours every day. And he quotes the Pasuk that says, Ki hok le Israel hu mishpat le loke Yaakov. Meaning to say that when a person learns the daily messages of the Gemara, the Zohar, the hok le Israel, the Musar, the Alakha, it also brings great, great benefit to the Neshama of uh, the person. Now, I'll tell you one more. Uh, there was a great uh, Hasidic master 
רבי משה יהודה לב אוף ססוב. Very famous in the Hasidic world. And uh, he says a couple of things, but I'll tell you one. It says, what does it mean to love a fellow friend? We all have friends. But how do we know if we love a friend? So you may say, come on, Rabbi, what's a question? I go out with them. We spend time together, vacation together, travel together, restaurants together. That is a social outing and it's beautiful. Just make sure to keep your safety guidelines. But you know what Ramosh Alem Misasov says? That a true friend is someone that you know what they need, what they are lacking. Meaning to say, your friendship is not external. Your friendship is not limited to restaurants and outings, but your friendship is in a way that you are able to help your friend succeed spiritually, etc. And it's never, uh, never minimize, never minimize the power of a good word, of the power of an influence of a person. It happened to me, yes, uh, actually today, earlier today. Somebody, I said to somebody, maybe call this fellow. So the person tells me, but you call him and nothing happened. I said, true, but maybe if he gets a phone call from you and got a phone call from me, maybe the neshama and his heart and his brain will open up, will activate. And that's something that it's important to know that many times, especially when we deal with matters which are spiritual deficiencies or challenges, we don't give up hope and we don't throw in the towel because we spoke to a fellow once or twice and didn't work out. Actually, I'll tell you a short story that happened in Argentina, maybe 20 years ago. There is a great rabbi uh, that Hashem should give him refuah sherema, Reb Moshe ben Toba, is known as the Kalev Rebbe, that he travels all over, or he used to travel all over the world to give chizuk, to strengthen Judaism in every community that he will go. There was never a penny requested from anyone, and he was there to give and not to take. I know this, I know this from professional and personal experience. And one day, a young fellow comes to him in Argentina and he says, Hacham, I have an uncle of mine, he says, that I'm encouraging him to close the store on Shabbat. Baruch Hashem, today, the community grew tremendously so the overwhelming majority doesn't open up the stores on Shabbat. With COVID, they're not even opening up during the weekday, but that's a whole different show. So I spoke to him several times to no avail. Maybe you can influence him to start closing the stores on Shabbat. The rabbi said, with pleasure. Tell him to come, I'm going to speak to him. He will not be able to come because he's afraid that it's gonna cost him money and you're gonna tell him different things. Tell him that it's not gonna cost him anything, the rabbi said, and it's true. The rabbi refused to take one cent from anyone. I've seen it here in action for years. And tell him that I'm gonna give him a blessing. Very nice. So this uh, young man goes to his uncle and he says, I met a rabbi fascinating first of all he doesn't take money the fellow say i don't believe you usually when rabbis pay me a visit they ask me for my donation it says this one rejects money he doesn't need money thank god baruch hashem so what does he want to see me so he wants to give you a blessing for success okay this fellow had a muna peshuta says, okay, if it's not going to cost me any money, 
and so me a blessing of success for success, what do I have to lose? So they set up an appointment, they go see the rabbi, and the fellow came for a whole list. And he says, Rabbi, I have a daughter that needs to get married. Rabbi, I want my grandchild to be healthy and strong. And he came with a whole list, doesn't cost him anything, and he's gonna give him a blessing. So take advantage, which is great, not a problem. We actually pray for Emunat Hachamim, like in the Babasali case. How many times people tell story of the water of the Babasali, the Arak of the Babasali, etc. And then the fellow, the rabbi, listen and blesses him. May you be successful. May your daughter find a good shiduch with a good, decent husband. A beautiful beracha. And then the rabbi asked this fellow, okay, you asking from Hashem a blessing in all these matters. Beautiful. What are you willing to do in return? And I'm not talking about giving charity, the rabbi said. What are you willing <coughs> to do in return? The fellow stayed quiet. The rabbi said, I give you a suggestion. Do you have your store open on Shabbat? The fellow said, yes. So let's make a deal. You close the store in Shabbat, and this will be your good faith deposit for all the blessings that you just asked for. The fellow thinks, one minute, silence. The fellow says to the great rabbi, deal. From this Shabbat, I'm closing. Great deal. The nephew hears that he made an agreement with the great rabbi. But the nephew was still hesitant. So he waited to see Sunday or Shabbat, what's going to be. And lo and behold, the store closed on Shabbat. And that's it. Sunday, the young man goes to the rabbi to tell him the great news. But it says, I'm a bit disappointed, says the young man. So the rabbi said, why are you disappointed? He's closing now the store on Shabbat. Says, true, but I'm disappointed that I spoke to him many times and nothing worked out. And you spoke to him one time for five minutes and you convinced him to close the store on Shabbat. The great rabbi of Caliph said to him, without you literally entering his mind, close on Shabbat, close on Shabbat, close on Shabbat, I would have not been able to achieve his agreement. So what does it mean? That a person should not think that the words that we say to influence in a good way another Yehudi, they go to the wastebasket. A person needs to make the ishtadlut. A person needs to try. It didn't work out. It's like shiduchim. How many times a person goes out on a shiduchim and didn't work, and that didn't work, and that didn't work. Couldn't be easier that Hashem sends the person the right one immediately, and that's it. You'll save money, you'll save stress, you'll save, you'll save aggravation, etc. But no, there is a reason, and there is an important uh, message that I think that we learn from this, that many times a person needs to go through a certain amount of situations in order to set up the person when the right situation comes in. Imagine yourself, a person never dated in their life, and they go out with a person that's gonna be their husband or their wife in the future, and they said, you know what? She was a bit nervous, he didn't talk too much, ta 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 ta. Guess what? When you date, for example, and you go out, a person becomes a bit more of experience in how to talk, what to look for, topics of conversation, and then when the right one comes, you're ready, ready to execute and to build 
your future home, which this is the springboard for today's Gemara. The Gemara, we switch the topic now. The Gemara of today, Masechet Berachot. The Gemara of today talks about how we should behave when we go to a wedding. Yes, you're allowed to eat when you go to a wedding. But let's see the Gemara's requirement when we go to a wedding, what we should do. And we do know that today weddings are very different at all levels. At least in this part of town, the amount of people, the distancing, the mask wearing, etc. But let's put all that on the side. We are in the actual uh, social hall of the event. So the Gemara brings in Masechet Berachot 6b. The Gemara says, Amar Rebi Halevo, Kol Anehene Misaudat Hatan Beeno Mesameho, Ober Behamisha Kolot. Any person who benefits from the party, no party, I shouldn't say party, the banquet, that's the proper word, of a Hatan and does not make him happy, he violates the power of the five sounds. What are the five sounds? The Pasuk writes, Kol Sason Bekol Simcha. This is Pasuk talks about Irmiyah Navi. And he says, the sound of joy, the sound of uh, gladness, Kol Hatan Bekol Kala, the sound of the groom and the sound of the bride, Kol Omrim, Hodu et Hashem Sevakot, the sound of people that say, praise Hashem, etc. Irmiya Hanavi talks about two eras in Jerusalem. One time that the city of Jerusalem was desolated and empty due to the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash and the Jewish people being evicted from the land of Israel. But will come a time that Yerushalayim's glory will be restored by Ezat Hashem, and it will be a lot of noise, noise of happiness, etc. Now, when a person, and Rashi explains, that when a person goes to a wedding, there is an actual mitzvah to be mesamea hatan bekala, to make the groom and bride happy. The Gemara even brings different things that you can say to the Hatan, Kalana Aba Hasuda, a wonderful and a kind bride. Literally, Naa doesn't mean in the physical looks. It means Naa be maaseha, be hasuda be midoteha. Naa be maaseha means her deeds are beautiful and her character trait is refined. So, what happens when a groom? listens to these words being said about his bride. His heart is going to be full of joy, full of happiness. Obviously, give him a nice gift also helps, which I believe people do usually. But it says that part of the Mesamea Hatam Bekala is to be happy with them. And that's why you see that Baruch Hashem in the, in the weddings, and I'm talking about the kosher weddings, meaning weddings, that have separation between male and female, because obviously mixed wedding is actually many halachic prohibitions. We, un we understand that, so I don't have to expand of something that is of common knowledge, but you see the men dancing and the ladies dancing and making the hatan and kala happy, this is actually an unbelievable merit. And the Gemara explains, Be'im mesameho masecharo, what happens now that a person goes to the wedding and doesn't stand in the corner? Sometimes you hear, you ask the next morning, how was the wedding last night? Tell me, oh, the caterer took too long. The food was cold. The music was too loud. I really did not like the flowers. I wonder who the party planner was. All these kinds of comments, I will tell you from a personal perspective, they should not be even mentioned. It's not your event. It's not your simha. Usually when you ask somebody, how was their wedding last night? What should be our answer? 
very nice, beautiful. I'm so happy for both of them, for their families. Positive and nice and move on. But now you have to give a whole shiur DNA of the flowers, the menu, the music, the band, the rabbi and the hazan and how long the chuppah took. That's definitely taking away from the kavod of the wedding. But the Gemara says, Amar Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, a person that goes to the wedding and makes the hatan happy and the kala as well, zoche le Torah shenitena b'hamisha kolot. This person will have a bonus gift from Shamaim that his neshama will be open to receive the sound of Torah that was given with five sounds. Where do we learn it from? From Sefer Shemot, Perashat Itro. When the Torah describes the giving of the Torah, let's read the Pasuk. And it was the third day, when it was morning, by he kolot, and they were sounds, uvrakim, and lightning, be'anan kaved al hahar, and a heavy cloud of the mountain, ve'kol ha'shofar olech be'godel, and the sound of the shofar becomes a loud, right here, ve'kol ha'shofar hazak me'od, and the sound of the shofar was very great, by he kol ha'shofar the sound of the shofar was increasing. Moshe yedaber be'elokim ya'aneno be'kol be'chol ha'am ro'im et ha'kolot be'et ha'lapidim be'et kol ha'shofar. How many times we say the word kol? Let's do the numbers. All together, five. So now, as a Gemara, if that's the case, be'aketiv, kol ha'am ro'im et ha'kolot. Everybody was able to see the sounds. From here, our sages tell us that in honor of the giving of the Torah, Hashem gave refuah shelema. God gave a complete recovery to every single Jewish person that was present in the giving of the Torah. Men, women, and children, young adults, young and adults. Why was this merit given? Because we cannot forget the fact that the Jewish people experienced the harsh labor for the last 86 years in Egypt. So what does it mean? That pain and suffering in a physical way, regretfully, was there. And who knows the defects or the, or the, or the broken bones or, the, or, or whatever thing they had experienced through the hands of the cruelty by the Egyptians, so to speak. But the Pasuk says, They were able to see, which usually able to be heard only. Imagine yourself, sometimes you look at something online and they have closed caption, right? What's closed caption? That everything that they are saying, you are able to see because somebody is typing, or maybe the system today captures the words and types it into the screen. But imagine yourself back then, 3,300 years ago when change, that suddenly they are able to see the sounds of the shofar. He said, like, I'm talking now. You don't see anything. You just see me. You see the books behind me. You see me moving my lips, moving my hands, moving my, my head. But you don't see the words being formed. We don't have that opportunity. But in that time, Everyone was able to see. You know what does it mean? Everyone, including those, God forbid, that they had poor vision or even they were blind. And also, even those that were deaf, Shomaim, they were able also to uh, listen, uh, etc. The Gemara goes even further. Rabbi Abu Amar, Ke'ilu Hikriv Todah. This is compared even to a person that brought a korban toda, a, a toda offering means a thanksgiving offering. Why? The Marsha explains. What is the korban toda? The korban toda means a happy reason why I'm bringing a sacrifice. Is a sacrifice to give gratitude to a Kadosh Baruch Hu. So once the person recognizes 
the gift or the miracle, the person feels joy. And that joy brings a special sacrifice. Kol korban toda is an optional sacrifice. It is not from the mandatory that we usually do, but it's a special thanksgiving offering connected to joy. And with that, the Gemara says, so when you bring joy to a groom, especially in the men's department, or to a bride from the ladies' department, is compared like if the person brought a thanksgiving offering to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Gemara says even further, Rav Nechman Baris HaKamar, Ke'ilu bana ahad mechorbot Yerushalayim, is compared like if a person rebuilt one of the ruins of Yerushalayim. Sheneemar, Ki Yashev et Shevut Ha'ares Kevarishona, I will return the captivity of the land of Israel back to the land of Eres Israel. So what does it mean? The Marsha explains that when we strengthen the concept of marriage, we are contributing to society of Am Israel and the continuation of Am Israel. With your permission, I'd like to expand in this. And I said this a week ago, or two weeks ago, I believe, in less than two weeks, in a wedding. This what a Kadosh in Perashat Pinhas, I believe, writes, that whenever there is a wedding in a family, or a simcha, obviously, in a good way, neshamot, souls, of our previous generations, they are allowed to come down to visit their relatives, and to celebrate with them. And someone may ask, why? Why don't we let them rest once they left the world? And the amount of generations, I believe it says three generations, so it will be a father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. Depends who is alive, you go up three generations. Now the question is why? Why are they allowed to come down? For what purpose? Short answer is as follows. That so, com, supplemented by the Gemara that we just read now. Because when Neshamot, souls, go up to Shamaim, they see a whole different perspective of life, of the world, than the one that they experienced themselves. And that's why the, the world up there is called Olam Ha'emet, the world of truth. Here is called Olam Hashekel, the world of lying, the world of deceitfulness. What you see is not what you get. You see somebody driving a fancy car, a, a, a living in a luxurious place and traveling, etc doesn't mean that they have the means to afford it or they have the funds. Or somebody who may look very elegant externally, but as a person, they don't have the recheres, they are not Adam, they are not Ben Adam. So you can get full externally in this world. But in Shamaim, it's a whole different ballgame altogether. But one thing, once the Neshamot come to Shamaim, one of the biggest concerns that now they have is what's going to be with my future? What is going to be with my descendants? Because they understand that as long as, you know, their descendants, the son, the grandson, etc., they follow in the ways of our tradition, in the ways of our Torah, so they're going to be able to build their families and to continue the legacy that began all the way from Abraham Avinu. But God forbid, God forbid, if a descendant of someone marries, God forbid, intermarriage or assimilation, what do you think it happens to the previous relatives that they're no longer among the living? Short answer, they are crying. They are crying because they see that their future is about to be erased. And therefore, the Gemara says here clearly, every time that there is a Jewish wedding 
is an answer to Nebuchadnezzar, to Paro, to Haman, to Amalek, to Hitler, to Hasve Shalom, to the Inquisition, that even though they attempted to remove us, we are able to have a resurgence, I believe it's called in English, and rebuild Am Israel and perpetuating Am Israel. And that is something that happens, Rabotai, ladies and gentlemen, Kahal Kadosh, every time that there is, especially a wedding. Mila, Bar Mitzvah, uh, Pidion, Bat Mitzvah, all that is wonderful. But when it comes to wedding, that is the stone or the stepping stone for the future generations through marriage and through uh, procreation, uh, etc. Okay, I will continue with the Gemara of today, and I think that will be today's class because there are a couple of beautiful lessons. Amar bi halabo, the same hacham. Maybe he was from halab. Maybe. Amar abuna. Kol adam sheyesh bo irat shamaim. Anyone who fears heaven, the words are accepted. Uh, the Etz Yosef explains that a person that has irat shamaim is loved and respected by the kahal, by people, and when he will say something, leshem shamaim to open the heart of a Jew or open the Neshama, it will have the power of influence. Today, in our generation, the 21st century, uh, the word influencer is connected to YouTube hits and followers of Instagram and TikTok and, and, and Snapchat and whatever platform. Yes, I know about a lot of these things. Yes, I do know. Baruch Hashem, uh, I do, I'm aware of what's happening out there. But regretfully, this is how our society is getting built. How many followers they have, how many hits they have. If you're a great Hacham, a great Rosh Shiva, and you have a lot of followers, beautiful. That's a great influencer. But if a person follows an influencer of YouTube, you know what kind of influence they're going to give you. Continues the Gemara, as the Pasuk writes, Shene Emar, as the Pasuk says, in the name of Shelomo HaMelech, Sof Davar Akol Nishma. At the end, all is heard. The Marsha explains what is referring to, Et HaElokim Yere, a person that is a God-fearing fellow, Kize Kol HaAdam, because this is the essence of the person, Amara Kadosh Baruchu, the Almighty said, Kola Olam Kulolo Nivra Ela Bishbil Ze. It says the entire world purpose is to expect that a society, but especially Am Israel, and every individual of Am Israel will follow in the footsteps of our Torah, follow in the guidelines of the Torah our misvot and ma'asim eh, tovim. And this is definitely an important lesson eh, for life, that irat shamayim, it doesn't happen overnight, and you don't buy that in Whole Foods, 500 milligrams. You buy that at the synagogue, you get it in the kolel, you get it in the yeshiva, you get it in your home, you get it in the kitab, you get it in the Torah. Irat shamayim, it's basically what shapes us as an individual. As I was telling somebody earlier today, he was asking me about a shiduch, and I tell him that she's from a good family, is beautiful, and, and, and all the beautiful things that we understand related to a shiduch are important. But there is one area that the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot discusses what should be one of the main goals of the person, the concept of the recheres the concept of midot tovot, that a person has a refined character because it does affect life, it does affect marriage when the character trait of a person, regretfully, is not what it should be. The Gemara concludes with a very interesting 
a message, the concept of saying hello to a friend. The Gemara writes, Amar Ebi Halyavo, Amar Abuna, Kol Sheyodeya Bahavero, Shehura Gil Liten Lo Shalom. Anyone who knows that his friend is accustomed to greet him, Yagdim Lo Shalom, greet him first. In other words, don't say, okay, I'm going to wait till he says hello to me, and then I will answer him back. The Gemara says that is not good at all. The opposite. Shene emar, bakesh shalom, berot fehu, seek peace and pursue peace. In other words, you see a friend coming, don't wait till he's next to you to answer him back. You be the, one, the first one to say, good morning, Shabbat shalom, shana tova, safra de maretav, vedoptalino, whatever salutation you say. Safra de maretav is the good morning that we say before prayers. There is a lachic discussion if you are allowed to say hello to somebody before praying because you should get, say hello to God first. But when you say safra de mare tav, that in English it means safra, means the morning, de mare of you, tav, should be good. He's saying good morning. But those who understand, they will say uh, good morning and you will answer the person tav hu le mare. May it be good to you as well. But what happened? What happened if somebody said to you, good morning, and we ignored it? Nikra Gazlan, he's called a robber. Meaning from Gezel, from stealing. You consume the vineyard, the property robbed from your house, it's in the person, meaning to say, a poor person has nothing that you can steal from them. That's why they are poor. And they need others to live, to survive, etc., but the only thing that a person has is the power of speech. Remember when I introduced the Babasali today and we explained where was the power of this great Sadiq and many Sadiqim, but he was special in this matter. He was very careful in every word that came out of his mouth. He was accounted for, he was measured, and he was obviously pleasant and positive. But all. Oh, I mentioned this, I believe, last week in the Perashat Shemot, that we described the fear of Paro, why Paro wanted to kill Moshe Rabbeinu, and how did Moshe Rabbeinu was about to be killed by Paro? If you look in Rashi, I believe, and Mefarshim say that he took the sword and he wanted to penetrate the sword in the neck of Moshe Rabbeinu. Now, why in the neck of Moshe Rabbeinu? Why not in the stomach? Why not in the heart? And we see in the Torah later that when Moshe Rabbeinu has a second child, Eliezer, what does he say? God came to my rescue and he saved me from the sword of Paro. Why the sword and why the neck? Short answer. Because remember when Moshe Rabbeinu sees that the Egyptian is striking the Jew, how did Moshe Rabbeinu get rid of the Egyptian? Not by touching him, by speaking. He ordered Hashem's name, and that's how this fellow had an early departure of the world. The next day, Moshe Rabbeinu sees two Jews fighting, and one of them says, Halorgeni ata omer, are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian yesterday, Omer, with words? When Paro heard, and these two criminals, Datan and Aviran, informed to Paro against Moshe, they said to Paro, don't call in the army, because this is not a normal situation. He doesn't need a weapon to kill. So how does he kill if he doesn't touch the person? He kills them with his words. So he wanted to get rid of the throat, so to speak, of Moshe Rabbeinu. And this way Moshe Rabbeinu will not be able to speak. And then the weapon was removed from Moshe Rabbeinu. 
Baruch Hashem, we all know the happy ending of the story, that the neck of Moshe Rabbeinu became strong as a marble, and there was no penetration of the sword, and Moshe Rabbeinu left to Midian, and everybody knows the rest of the story. And this is what the Gemara says. It says that to a needy person, to a needy person, the only thing that we can do to them, besides helping them, is greeting them. And that's why the Gemara made such an emphasis at the end of the class of today, the importance of greeting people and not waiting to say, oh, if he says hello to me, I'm going to say hello to him. The Gemara says that's not a proper way that a Jew acts or thinks. The opposite, the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot says, just to finish this in a happy statement, which is also mentioned in the Gemara, Le'olam heve makdim shalom lechol adam. We should be the first ones always to be the first one to say good morning good evening thank you how are you good seeing you don't wait till the person speaks and Be'ezat Hashem once we act that way believe me it enhances relationship it gives the person a sense of of, of being it's like you leave your building and you say to the concierge in the front or to the guard in the front good morning have a good day believe me even though it seems very simple to them, makes a world of difference, and also it makes us to look that we are thoughtful and respectful of everyone. My dear friends, I will let you go. I wish everybody to have a beautiful week, Be'ezat Hashem. We'll see each other, God willing, tomorrow morning, 9.15, via itorah.com, and we say it is Kela Mizvot to the Falak family for graciously sponsoring the Shi'ur in honor of their beloved father, Ezra ben Sarah, and as well as to Eli Levi uh, for graciously sponsoring today's uh, class, Le'ilu Nishmat, his grandmother, Altun bat Sarah, Aleha, uh, Altun bat Salha, rather, Aleha Hashalom. May the Neshamot have an Aliyah in Gan Eden. Amen. Shavua Tov, Umevorach to everybody.